afternoon, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. I'm a postgraduate student of Beijing Forestry University, and my presentation topic is of antenna in butterflies. My presentation will be given in mainly four parts: introduction, material and methods, results, and discussion. To begin with, I shall explain to you two questions. First, why oyster tree? The oyster tree flies are small but unique group whose larva cause meiosis in mammals, reducing the productivity and welfare of domestic and uh, dom of domestic animals, and threatening the lives of a wide range of species uh, of a wide range of endangered species. Sometimes they cause meiosis on human and their skin or in eyes, causing severe meiosis and infection. Here is a GIF that shows an oyster larva trying to get out from human skin. The second question is why we choose antenna as our subject. The butterflies have several drawbacks, such as limited number of individuals, scattered distribution, short lifespan, and so on. As the most important sensory organs, the antenna of flies have evolved various features to enhance their adaptability and sensitivity to the ever-changing environment in order to mate and spawn successfully. Take the life circle of horse butterflies, the gastrophilus, as, a speech, as, as an example to show how developed and sensitive the antenna is. As soon as the adults emerge from the puparia, Males and females fly towards the topographic landmark to meet and mate. After being fertilized, the females fly immediately to search for hosts in order to lay eggs. In this time-limited process, the antenna played a crucial role in finding proper mates and hosts. Besides, the relationship of butterflies and the herbivores is very strong. Thus, the investigation of the antenna sensor organs will perform more information that will, that will contribute to the butterfly's phylogeny and a further understanding of antenna function and evolution. The species involved in this study are listed, covering all four subfamilies of oestridae, and a different, genera, different genera of each subfamily are contained. We use stereoscope, scanning electronic microscope to review the surface ultrastructure, ultrastructures of butterflies. And the optical microscope and the laser scanning confocal microscope are utilized for inner ultrastructures. Here comes the results. Primarily, the general morphology of tenna in Australia. Each butterfly bears a pair of arrested antenna located on the frontal region of head between compound eyes. Each, each antenna is composed of three segments. The proximal scape, the pedicel, and the distal flagellum consisting of a nucleus and a arista. The scape is the shortest segment of antenna, and the pedicel is the second segment both on antenna scape and pedicel. The only type of sensilla is the mechanoreceptor. The mechanoreceptor is a long and straight bristle inserting into a socket with longitudinal grooves on cuticular wall. The funiculus is the most important sensory organ of antenna and has a numerous sensilla attached to it. Let me show you these attractive structures in proper order. First of all, trichoid sensilla. Trichoid sensilla are the largest and the most compulous sensilla on funiculus. They are blunt-shaped and hair-like, extending above the microtrichia in various lengths, from 15 to 20 microns. The basoconic sensilla are sharp-tipped and, and can be divided into various subtypes. Here are different subtypes of basoconic sensilla in butterflies. You can see the long one, short one, branch one. Coloconic sensilla are, dis are distributed in depressions or cavities. They are very short sensilla characterized by longitudinal ridges on cuticular wall. 
There are also different subtypes of coloconic sensilla in butterflies. Clavid sensilla are club-like, featured by distal dilations. They are, they are seated in superficial cavities on proximal region of funiculus. Auriculate sensilla are ear or spawn-like, on the surface or in pits of antenna. Besides the surface sensilla, there are also some in sensory pits. Sensory pits are single-chambered cuticular invigations of funiculus. This picture shows a slice of puffing section. You can see cluster of sensilla in the sensory pits. After funiculus, let's look into the arista. The arista consists of one or two shard basal segments and a long distal segment. In some subfamilies, the distal segments are longer and spiral. On the basal region, Several coloconic sensilla were also discovered. I will show you the details in the next part. That's all for the results. Let's move on to the discussion. Morphological characters of flies have been widely used in taxonomy, phylogeny, and also give directions to functional investigation. Combined with our results, we make discussion in two aspects, the phylogeny and the function. First, the phylogenetic implications given by antennal structures. This picture exhibits the phylogenetic tree of butterflies. That was constructed by PAVE in 2001. Using 118 characters from all developmental stages, including morphology, ontogeny, physiology, and behavior, all four subfamilies are contained. This is our group. We mapped the uh, antenna structures on the tray. First, we found that the funiculus of butterflies can be divided into four types the cutibrainy tab, the cobia tab, the gastrohippo tab, and the ostrony tab. Look at these pictures. You can see the funiculus are condensed and swollen along the phylogenetic tray. Thus, we could conclude that the condensed and the swollen funiculus could be the synopomorphy of butterflies. On the funiculus of the art group and the cutibrinae species, one or a few sensory pits were located. But in this clade, these three genera, numerous sensory pits, usually more than 20, were discovered. That could be the synopomorphy of these three genera. The arista of the, of, of the art group and the cutibrinae are relatively straight. But the arista of this species, of these three genera, are spiral. So the spiral arista could be the synopomorphy of this clade. On the basal region of Arista, several coloconic sensilla were just found in three genera, the Dematobia, the Gastrophilus, and the Poskinsia. What's more, the Aristo sensilla were just detected in butterflies. As the synopomorphy of these three genera, we could conclude that the Aristo sensilla have evolved several times, forming different morphological types in the evolutional history. Next is the functional investigation given by antenna structures. More compared with other flies, more sensory pits were discovered in butterflies. And the sensory pits are the largest and the most complex sensory organs of funiculus of butterflies. As the butterflies are obligate parasites, the function of more sensory pits could be are suggested to trap older molecules, facility odor detection, enhance olfactory sensitivity, and also protect the fragile antennal sensilla from mecha mechanical damage or irritation. Another particular character of butterflies is the more diverse sensilla in sensory piece. Look into the table. You can see just one or two types of sensilla in sensory piece of other flies. 
but in butterflies, nearly all types of sensei are in sensory piece. Given the butterflies are parasites with, with, high, host specific, with high host specificity, the function of more diverse sensei in sensory piece for butterflies could be, uh, could be an applicable strategy for enhancement of olfactory accuracy to distinct molecules. In recognition of the above, we may conclude that the butterflies are obligate parasites causing severe masses in mammals and uh, um, resulting in enormous losses. Great advantages have been made in understanding of these fascinating parasites and, uh, further, and the potential for further investigation of these parasites are demonstrated, which would highly further the which would highly further the um, phylogeny, ta taxonomy, phylogeny, and the evolution of butterflies, and also contribute to the synthetic attractants for monitoring studies and ultimately control the past populations. Finally, I want to express my gratitude to my teacher for his invaluable suggestions and generous encouragements. And I would like to thank my partners. They also give me lots of help. That's all I want to show you. Thanks for your attention. Great, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you for a good presentation. Thank you. You used uh, four different types of microscopes. Yes. Were these microscopes within the same facility, or you had to go to each of these places where these microscopes were? Um, sorry? Did you have the four microscopes within a building, within your laboratory, or you had to go to different places where each of these microscopes were situated? Um, should I? Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> sorry. Yes, uh, I, I did these experiments in my school, and, uh, and uh, all experiments used in this study I, um, are, are, are the. All kind of scopes are in the same facility, right? Yes. It's, it's, it's not a question, it's rather a praise. I'm kind of indirectly involved in phylogenetic of insects as well, and I know how complicated it can be that molecular methods cannot resolve it. The resolution is really poor. All supports are really poor, and I really appreciate that the stuff that you're doing, some synapomorphies and other stuff that can bring some order in this, in this cha chaotic field. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.